Hello and welcome to this Astranti video for the May and August 2020 operational case study exam sittings where we're going to be conducting a strategic analysis based around our pre-seen company charge it. Okay, so the aim of this video today is, is to give you more of an insight into Chargit's strategy at the moment as an entity, and then to analyze, to try and predict where the company will look to move in terms of its strategic development as the business develops and progresses going forward. Okay, and we then hope that by developing your sort of strategic knowledge in relation to the precinct company over the course of your revision, you will be in a more informed position to make more logical decisions in relation to the various tasks that you will come up against in the variance within your exam. Okay, so before we get into this strategic analysis, the first thing we're going to do is just give you a brief refresher into our precinct company charge it. As I'm aware, it may have been a little bit of time since you actually conducted your own analysis and revision in relation to the actual precinct document. Okay, so we know that our precinct company charge it is a manufacturer of domestic electronic cordless goods. Okay, more specifically, the business manufactures a range of hoovers and gardenware products like lawnmowers. And it then sells these via a range of third-party retailers and also possesses its own online store to sell products directly to consumers. The company is based in the fictional European country of Eastland and has been trading since 2001, so it's around 20 years old. And the company remains in the ownership of the founder behind the business, Gavin Mansell, and his wife, Anthea Mansell, who each own 50% of the business's equity. And finally, we know that in recent years, the company has enjoyed significant financial success, so really strong growth in terms of its revenue and profits in recent years, and is now a market leader in specific areas of the domestic electronic cordless goods market, specifically in relation to its production of cordless products that it can excel in via the use of specialist battery technology that it specializes in. Okay. And the company's growth is now emphasized by the fact that it employs 250 staff in its Eastland base where all of its sort of production and other operations are undertaken from. Okay, so with that reintroduction to the case out the way, we can move on to the actual analysis itself. And like I said at the start of this video, the model that we're going to use as they sort of format behind our analysis is known as the rational planning model. Some of you may have come across this model before. If you haven't, don't worry. What we're going to do briefly now is give you a quick overview of how the model works. Okay, so as you can see on screen at the moment, the rational planning model is made up of two areas of analysis. Okay, so this model looks at where a business is now, i.e. assesses a business's current position. Okay, and then we have analysis of the future position of the business, i.e. where the business would like to be going forward after the implementation of its strategy. Okay, and then the third aspect of this model, the third area of analysis here, essentially centers around the creation of a business's strategy. And as you can see on screen at the moment, essentially what this strategy does is it bridges the gap between a business's current position, i.e. where it is now, and where the business would like to be in the future. Okay, so if you were to get a question in one of the variants in your exam, which centered around something like a new project or a new product that the business is looking to engage into, what you can do is you can apply your knowledge of the business's strategy based on this rational planning model and see whether this specific product or this specific project you're facing in the exam actually matches with where the business wants to be in terms of its strategic development going forward. Okay, so we're going to start this video today by focusing on where Lottie Graphite wants to be in the future, i.e. where the business will be after it has implemented its strategy. Okay, so this stage of our analysis aims to help us ensure that we fully understand where this organization is heading in the future. 
Okay, and this centers around not only understanding how the business itself is going to develop and grow in the future, but is also going to ensure that we understand how the business plans to cater to and meet the needs of the various different stakeholder groups that have a vested interest in its operations. Okay, so in terms of our analysis about where the company wants to be going forward, the first things that we are going to focus on are its mission and its objectives. Now, it may be that we don't actually get clear black and white evidence of what these are from the pre-seen information we're provided by SEMA. So we may have to make some suppositions on our part and sort of develop a mission and some objectives based on what we know about the pre-seen company so far. Moving on, we'll then look at critical success factors in relation to charge it. So critical success factors are essentially things a business must do well at, must succeed in relation to if it is to be successful going forward. We'll then move on and look at the crucial areas of governance and ethics. Now, Charger is obviously a private company, so governance isn't as prominent a topic as it would be for a public, i.e. a listed company. However, ethics is still a vital topic as it is within any case study exam under the SEMA accounting qualification. Okay, and then finally, we're going to try and identify and map some of the various stakeholder groups who will be interested in and who will be impacted by charge its development as the business continues to grow and move forward. Okay, so let's move on and look at our first area of analysis here and we're going to start by looking at charge its mission so the first thing we actually need to clarify here is what is a mission for an organization in more general terms well essentially a mission helps to provide an organization or a group with a common purpose okay so let's pause for a minute and think about this idea in a non-business related context Okay, so imagine that you play for a football team. Now, at the start of your team's league season, you don't just rock up to the first game, start playing and then carry on and complete the season. At the start of the season, what you will instead do is set goals, set particular purposes, set particular things that you want to achieve over the course of the season. Now, this may be that you want to win a particular cup competition. It may be that you want to play in a particular style. Or it may be something like you want to achieve a particular position or finish within your league. So what setting goals of this nature does at the start of the season is it gains buy-in from all the members of your team and essentially gives you something to strive for, something to try and achieve over the course of this league season. Now, in a business context, a mission applies in a very similar way. It fulfills a very similar function. And essentially, a mission provides a level of focus for a business's or an organization's strategy. From a slightly higher level perspective, what a business's mission allows leadership figures such as a company's directors to do is to provide the business with a direction. So if directors have an overall purpose, an overall mission that they are working to, they can guide a business's objectives and a business's strategy in relation to achieving this sort of overall goal, this overall mission. Okay, so a mission provides focus not only for those working within a business, but also for those making decisions in relation to the business's growth and development going forward. If a business lacks an overall mission, then overall the organization itself may lack focus in terms of its operations. It may lack a purpose in terms of what it is trying to achieve. And if this is the case, the overall strategic direction sorry, of the business may be confused as there is no overriding purpose within the organization that its staff, that its leaders are trying to attain, that they are trying to reach. Okay, now one of the common theories in relation to mission statements was set out by Campbell, who set out what are considered to be the key elements of a good mission statement. So what we're going to do is we're going to examine charge its operations in relation to these four elements that Campbell identified. Okay, and what this should allow us to do is get more of an assent about what this company's mission is and then get an idea about its purpose and how it's going to develop and grow to meet this purpose in future accounting periods. 
Okay, so the first element of a good mission statement that we can take a look at in relation to charge it relates to the organization's purpose. So here essentially we're looking at why does Charger exist and for whom does it exist as initial questions. Okay, so we're essentially asking here why did Gavin Mansell initiate, set up this business all those years ago in 2001? Okay, so we know that products like vacuum cleaners, like lawnmowers are essentially fairly functional products. They fulfill a necessity in terms of people maintaining the quality of their homes and gardens. And with this idea in mind, we can say that the organization exists to provide high quality products to help people fulfill these sort of day to day roles, these chores within their homes as easily and conveniently as possible. Okay. So we know that the business's success has been built around innovations in relation to cordless technology and battery technology, the key benefit of which have been increased levels of convenience for these domestic products in the eyes of consumers, whilst we also know that the business has a reputation for quality and reliability in the industry. Okay, so essentially the business is attempting to make the lives of its consumers easier by providing them with high quality products to reduce the burden of day-to-day -day domestic chores around the house. The other question we can ask in relation to charge its purpose, essentially, is what does the organisation hope to achieve in the long term? Okay, so there are a range of different points we can make in relation to this question. Firstly, we see obviously that the business wants to be a leading provider within the industry. Currently, they have market leading technology in relation to the battery technology employed in the company's hoovers. But I think it's safe to say that as it grows and continues to expand, the business wants to extend this sort of market lead status to other areas of the industry. I think the idea of quality is also a very relevant point here. We've seen how the business has a reputation in place for quality and reliability in relation to its products. So ensuring that it maintains this quality reputation and enhances this quality reputation is another key part of the organization's long term aims. We also see evidence in the pre-scene that the business is looking to expand into new markets. So this may relate both to new product markets in terms of sort of new domestic electric goods, but it also relates to new geographic markets. And we can see the business has already taken steps in relation to this aim by generating 25% of revenue currently from overseas markets. And finally, of course, the business wants to continue in terms of the financial success that it is currently enjoying. So we've seen how the business's revenue has increased by 32% in the 2019 financial year. This sort of financial growth, this sort of financial success is, of course, crucial to the business's long term aims and long term achievements. Element number two that Campbell set out as part of his good mission statements relates to strategy. Now here essentially the questions that we are asking is how will the organization actually compete, especially in relation to the range of businesses that it is currently competing with and operating against within the market. So in relation to charge it, there are several key points that we can make here. Firstly, and absolutely crucially is the idea of product development. Now, this is a key part of the business's operations from the development of actual new product types to the development of new product technology principally centered around the business's battery usage. OK, we've seen already how this has given the business a key source of competitive advantage. So continuing to develop in this area, continue to invest in research and development and product development is going to be a crucial part of the business's ability to compete in a contracting market going forward. Similarly, as we've just talked about, key to the business's growth and success going forward will be its ability to expand into new markets, be these either global markets, so the US and Europe, for example, or into new product markets, so new garden type products, for example. And finally, the business will have to continue to maintain and enhance the reputation that its brand currently has in relation to providing quality and reliable products or services.
If a consumer spends several hundred pounds on a vacuum cleaner that doesn't work effectively or that breaks really quickly soon after purchase, they're not going to go back to that same company and buy a replacement model. Okay, So maintaining these quality standards, maintaining this reputation for reliability are crucial ways in which the business can continue to achieve success going forward. The penultimate element that Campbell set out of a good mission statement relates to an organization's values. So here we are looking essentially at what Charge It stands for as a business. Okay, so we might be repeating ourselves a little bit here, but one of the first things that we can clearly see the business stands for is providing quality services to products. The business wouldn't have been able to develop this reputation for quality and reliability if it did not care about the quality of the products that it provided to consumers. Okay, and then the next key point here is the value of innovation that the business clearly possesses, specifically in relation to its development of new products. So I'm not going to repeat myself about the importance of product development within the business, but what we clearly see is that the business has a strong culture centered around innovation and receptiveness to new ideas when it comes to the development of products and the implementation of technology in relation to this process. Finally, one point we haven't talked about so far is in relation to the environmentally conscious nature of this business. So in the business's strategy or in the information we have in relation to the business's strategy, it clearly states that it aims to maintain the environmental standards of its operations. And this is a point that is reinforced in relation to various other aspects of the precinct that we get information on. Okay, so clearly here a business that wants to provide high quality products to consumers that are innovative, that take into account the latest technologies and the latest consumer trends, but also a business that looks to do all this while remaining environmentally conscious and attempting to mitigate the impact of its operations on the wider environment. Okay, so the final aspect of Campbell's elements of a good mission statement relate to policies. Now, policies are things that people are expected to follow that ensure that staff within a business act according to the defined values, strategy and purpose of the business as an overall entity. Now, we maybe don't see a multitude of absolutely explicit company policies stated in the pre scene, but there are a couple of things that we can infer from information we have about the business's strategy from the document. OK, so the key thing that I would state here, firstly, I put innovation down on the presentation, but the overriding idea I have here is the sort of focus the business possesses on product development. OK, so the overall strategy, the overall purpose of the business focuses so closely around the continued investment and development of new products for consumers. OK, so in general terms, this focus on product development is without doubt an overall sort of purpose, an overall focus that the business and all the employees within it continually look to focus on, continually look to develop on and exploit. On a slightly different note, the other sort of policy that I have in place here relates to environmental standards. Now, as I've talked about, this is explicitly mentioned in relation to the company's strategy, but we also see other mentions of the business's environmentally conscious nature in relation to things like its suppliers. So it's very clear here that we have an organization that is looking to innovate, that is looking to cater to consumers. But as I've just said, that is looking to do this in a very environmentally conscious manner and expects all those involved in its business from employees all the way through to suppliers to meet these standards and to, to operate in this manner. Having watched this sample, we'd like to take the opportunity to draw your attention to a few of the other products that Astranti offer in relation to the case study exams. Now, the first of these is a study text, and this study text is available for all three of the SEMA case study levels. This study text contains comprehensive advice on how to pass the relevant level case study exam. This is advice ranging from tips on how the exams are actually marked and what you need to do to get these marks all the way through to actually writing style and other key advice. These study texts are then supplemented by course videos. And again, these course videos touch on some of the key ideas that you need to abide by, that you need to be aware of when looking to pass your case study exams. For individual sittings, 
we then produce pre-seen analysis videos. Now these are a range of videos where an expert in the office dissects the pre-seen in minute detail, bringing out some of the key points that you need to be aware of and really giving you a thorough understanding of the company for you to take into your exam. These pre-seen analysis videos are then supplemented by our industry analysis pack. Now you'll be aware of this if you just watched our sample video, but essentially what this pack contains is an analysis on the industry behind the fictional case study company. So we look at the industry itself, competitors, things like that, really dig into detail here so you don't have to do this as part of your revision. And then crucially, we compare this to the case study company. So what we have here is a video that you've just seen a sample of, but the main thing we produce in this regard is a industry analysis document. On top of these products, we then produce mock exams. So there'll be a range of different mock exams for each case study sitting. And these are designed to be as real life as possible, as close to the real life exam as possible. So we provide not only a range of mock questions, but we also provide comprehensive, detailed model solutions, if you like. So you can compare your answers to with the model solutions produced by our experts in-house. On top of this, you can then also choose to have the solutions that you create to our mock exams marked and then personalized feedback provided by SEMA qualified accountants. Now on top of all these options, we also offer a comprehensive masterclass. And what this masterclass is really good for is those sorts of people who maybe have decided to, to study for the exam at the last minute, or those of you who just want a sort of comprehensive overview of everything that the exam will cover. And so these are comprehensive recordings which you can either watch live or which you can watch as recordings, covering everything you need to know about the exam. And finally, we do have a lot of confidence in the quality of our material. So if you purchase our full course pack, and if you don't pass your exam, unfortunately, using this pack, then we will offer you a pass guarantee. Essentially, we will provide you with free materials for the next course sitting. So all that's left for me to say is once again, thank you very much for watching this video and best of luck in your exam from everyone here at Estranti.